So recently a thread was brought to my attention that's garnered some pretty significant traction on Reddit. And as we all know, Reddit is where good ideas and honest discussion go to die. But I'm going to put this thread up on here. I'm going to kind of go over a couple things in this post. So the gist here is this guy is whining, complaining that he has been killed, blah, blah, blah. But let's got to get into it, right? So he says, and I quote, Before I start, let me just clarify, piracy is a part of Star Citizen and a gameplay loop some enjoy. It brings an element to Star Citizen that a lot enjoy and it should remain. However, sport killing for fun is becoming too common and forcing people out of the game. Okay, right over here, it's you come in with this, you try to... It, it's concern trolling, right? This is all this is. This is him trying to seem like a moderate. He has an agenda. He hates PvP. He wants to be done with it, but he's taking this angle. But let's continue here because it does get better. He then goes on to say, and I quote, So yes, piracy is part of the game and PvP is part of the game. But we are not playing Call of Duty here, where everyone is spawning into PvP the first person they see to up their frag count in KDA. PvE is also part of the game as well, which some people like to play. PvE is becoming incredibly impossible to play with the overabundance of people just looking to go out and blow up other ships to try and flex. This is where the lies start coming out. There's no truth to this, okay? So, I define piracy as any type of outlaw behavior that generates crime stat. The game defines it as that too. Even the lore defines it as that. Anything that's an outlaw in UE space is up to and including murderers. Maybe my definition of piracy is being a murderer. So it's not up to him to decide what piracy is, or anybody for that matter. It's up to me, you know, me as an individual to decide what piracy is to me. But this is where the lies come in. And this is an example of a malicious care bear. There's a video coming in about those too. This guy's making this up. I have been doing PvE and PvP. I have never in the years or the over a year now that I have been actively playing Star Citizen, I have not once ever been attacked and killed on the pad of a station. Not once. This is before stations even had hangers, which added more safety. Not once was I ever ganked on the pad of a station. Yet, when you read threads like this, you think it's happening all the time. So, yeah, complete bullcrap. But moving on. Quote, unquote, Consideration to other players. Not everyone is playing the game as you see it. And you are not playing the game as other people see it. Just because you want to play in a PvP hardcore game mode doesn't mean everyone else does. While I think Star Citizen will help correct this by limiting PvP to certain areas, maybe high value areas, etc., there needs to be a place in the game where people can PvE without Joe Blow being able to come up, blow up a ship that just took someone an hour to load up and get ready for their game. If you were to add a PvE zone where nobody can attack you, that would simply take out a huge portion of what makes this game what this game is. PvE and PvP have to be blended together. And I think reasonable players understand that. He goes on to say, and I quote, This weekend during Free Fly, I sat and watched so many new Free Fly players getting picked off, leaving places such as Everest Harbor and Port Wrestler, and never even getting to go experience the game due to more seasoned players sitting there picking them off as soon as they left the station, over and over again. At some points, new players actually quit playing and logged off because their attempt to even try the game was completely ruined at the start. I wanted to view this from a new player perspective, so I spawned my little 100i that I hadn't used in years and headed out to all the space stations arriving at Port Tressler. I was immediately met with a gladius and an arrow that attacked me immediately. Lucky I got out of the ship and EVA to the station before they blew it up, and these were not new players. Next, I went back to Everest Harbor, met by a glaive and a talon, and was obliterated in seconds after arriving. Lastly, I went to Arcor and landed at Bajini Point no problem. So I thought, as I was leaving hit by an Eclipse Torp, since I had set to spawn there, I respawned and tried to leave again. Eclipse Torp. Okay, this is all fabrication. This part here is a complete lie. This guy, this is the malicious care bear at work, right? This is making up a story, trying to evoke emotion. Oh, the poor new players. Think of the new players. I, I watched and, and I saw it with my own eyes as they got killed. They ganked at all these places. Bull. Absolute bull. First and foremost, like I said earlier, I've never been ganked. I've never been ganked at a station. I've never had that happen. If you are even remotely competent in this game, you can abuse the speeds and the mechanics to get away before anybody can even touch you. Killing somebody before they get into quantum is a Herculean task unless you have a interdictor like a Mantis, and you can't activate those around stations. Next thing that makes me realize this guy's full of crap, a 100i getting hit by an Eclipse Torp. 
If you haven't played 3.19, you should understand now that torpedoes are in a really bad spot. They don't hit, they don't track. The default ones, which are um, cross-section, are atrocious. And the EM ones ain't much better. And the 100i with that low of a signature is not getting hit by an Eclipse Torpedo. Also, how would the guy even know he get hit by an Eclipse Torp? He wouldn't. So, this part here, this is all a complete lie and a fabrication. This is not happening. He goes on, and I quote, Not wanting to try it again, I reset my spawn to New Babbage and just went back home. From here, I thought I would try some new player-style box running missions and bunkers. I was instructed to pick up a box and drop it off at facility on MT. Getting the box was no issue. However, arriving at the MT mining facility to turn it in, I was met with two Scorpius, again, in my 100i. They both approached me and I said I could safely land and leave again if I paid them 400k! Exclamation point. While this is closer to the gameplay I would expect to see from real piracy, 400k from a new player that start with 25k? Come on! I said I was new and only had 15k left. Shot down. I was so frustrated at this point, I just quit trying to play the new player experience and went back to beacons and bounties. Very sad experience. Does anybody else here just not believe this? I have, again, who, who here has ever had this happen? If you read the, and be honest, don't lie to you, don't lie to me, don't lie to yourself. I very rarely find players in the verse. The game has never felt more dead as it does right now. A combination of the patch being out for so long, players being all over the world, people rampantly duping and taking up spots on the server that would be otherwise used by legitimate players. I hardly find anybody, let alone a guy with two crude Scorpiuses, that's four players, just waiting for somebody some random point. Okay. And finally, quote unquote, piracy is and will always be a part of the game, as it should, but not everyone wants to just PvP you all the time. If you want to be a pirate, Go camp shipping lanes, drug houses, burger yard, etc. Be a pirate. Sport killing for fun of it, especially new potential backers to help fund the development of the game and ruining their experience. Just make yourself feel like a better pilot is not piracy. So we got the end of it here. We've pretty much established that this guy's a liar. This is more concern trolling. This is more uh, crocodile tears and all that, you know, cry bully nonsense. It's trying to get something in the game changed and creating an emotional narrative to try and get that to happen. And players will do this, especially the malicious care bearers. But let's assume for a, re a little bit here that part of this is true, which I don't believe any of it, but let's assume it is, okay? It is ignore all the facts, all the stuff I said about never being ganked on pads, even when you just spawned your ship out in the open to the world to see, all right? I am one of those players that definitely kills for sport and Star Citizen. And I don't care if you're in a hangar, outside of a hangar. I don't care if you're a criminal or a bounty hunter or a lawful player. I'll kill you on sight if I feel like it. That, for me, is my fun part of the game. And before you say that that is not piracy or a legitimate gameplay loop, I would disagree with you on all counts. So now we've got that out of the way. Yes, it is piracy. But I think I should explain why I opt to go and kill players at stations or in hangars or anywhere else, you know. And, and it is also to rank up crime stat so that the bounty hunters do come after me and I fight them. But it's also because I have no other real way to go out and find players in a reasonable amount of time. Or even at all. If I could take a Terrapin and I could use its supposedly extremely good scanning technology and scan down players in the air and halo and get to them while they're out there mining, I would do that. If I could use some method of scans to find players out in the middle of space doing PVE bounties and go after them, I would do that. Same goes for bunkers. You see what I'm getting at here? The only way I can reliably find players is at stations. And that's why when you do see players doing PVP, you typically see them at stations or around SMO uh, 20 and 10 on Microtech for people who are running Barrel. And maybe you see them over at Ghost Hollow, which nowadays Ghost Hollow is pretty empty anyway. So people aren't doing Ghost Hollow. So where do they go? They go to the stations to get people where they are most likely to be caught. And they are most likely to be caught outside of a station returning or coming to it. And this is what highlights a couple gameplay issues. This person and others in that thread are very incorrectly advocating for the separation of PvE and PvP. 
I will never agree with that. I believe that PvE and PvP should absolutely coexist. Because a game without loss is a game without value. I do not agree with full loot. And I will even admit that ganking people at stations is far too easy. But let's examine not only why it happens, but let's examine why players are shocked when it does, the rare cases that it does, and why it surprises them and makes them angry. The first thing that happens when you spawn in this game is you spawn on the planet, okay? You load in the game, you're on the planet. You're in an armistice zone. In planet armistice, you cannot fire your weapon. You cannot pull it out. Your ship weapons are disabled. You cannot take damage. That is an armistice zone. Think of it as any newbie starter zone in any other MMORPG. I do not agree with this. I do not like this. It is gamey and fake, and I hate it. Let's say you go from Lorville up to Everest Harbor. All right? You go up there. You are now, again, in an armistice zone. But this one is different, and you would have no idea that it is until this happens to you. You can now take damage. You can now fire your weapons, and you can be fired upon. This is different. So this armistice zone at the station is different than the one on the planet. And the game does not do anything to communicate that. So then you fly there, and you go, oh, the station is going to protect me. I might be taking damage, but there's guns here. And the guns fire sometimes. And the assailant takes no damage, and he kills you, and he laughs at you, and he calls you a noob, and you feel bad. That's assuming that this all happens. So what is the solution here? Is the solution to make every station and every armistice zone like the planet or Grimhex? Or is the solution to make every armistice zone a believable and challenging place to actually do PvP in? I think it's the latter. I don't want magic safe zones and magic no damage being taken shields, okay? I think that if you get attacked at a station, the station should be an absolute credible threat. Not instantly kill you, but if you're good enough, you can avoid... And keep in mind, the reason why the stations have a hard time hitting players is not just because of the stations, but it's because of how fast ships move. So maybe master modes will change that, but I digress. So it should be an effort to kill somebody at a station. The Navy showing up should also be an effort. I, I don't want, you know, spawning guards that are infinite like in other MMORPGs. But I think that this would add another gameplay element. That if you want to lock down a station, you can defang it by killing the turrets. You can destroy the Navy that shows up if you have enough people and are organized enough. And then you can truly blockade it and await a player response. That's my dream of it. But if that's not your dream, then let's ignore that part. And let's just say we make it harder to gank people. So if it's harder to gank people at stations, then where are PvP players going to go to find PvP? Are they going to go to the opt-in PvP at uh, Microtech down at Ghost Hollow? Or are they going to go to Arena Commander? Is that what you want? Do you want complete and total segregation of the player base to Microtech, Ghost Hollow, or Arena Commander? Or do you want them to organically be part of the game's ecosystem? Again, I want the latter. I want things to be organically part of the ecosystem. But these are the things that we have to consider when we talk about banning or segregating the player base like this. And it's very easy to give in to this idea because it, it's uh, words. They play on our emotions, right? We, we tell a sad tale about, oh, the humble noob with his 15k and he... He spawned his poor little baby Aurora. He's like, oh man, this is so fun. I'm going to get to a flying space. And then he opens up the hangar and Buzzcut Psycho's out there with an Idris M with the railgun facing the hangar door. And as soon as it opens, poor little Billy and his Aurora eats a size 10 bolt and explodes. And then he gets called a noob. That's the story that we'll tell, right? And it's easy to harp on those emotions. And that's why people make up these stories and push for these things without understanding the potential long-term danger of implementing such a thing. So, if we then don't want to segregate players, we then have to make it so that players can actually find people and do legitimate piracy. You can't camp shipping lanes like this guy said. They're too easy to avoid. If you had a lattice-like system, think Stellaris, right, with the travel lanes, which are unavoidable travel lanes... If you had something like that, then it adds predictability to travel, which adds blockading outside of stations and puts an emphasis on the Mantis and other things. But we don't have that either. If you want to go mining on a planet, 
it's going to be very hard to find somebody mining on the planet. Because the scanners just don't let you scan that more, you know, scan that much. You, you can't do it. It's, it's hard to find them. So then, are we ever going to have a danger here? I, I've never been in danger doing mining or even cargo. I'm sure others have, but I never have. I promise you that if it was easier to find players out there through scanning and once again, giving the Terrapin a purpose, you would see more legitimate danger, and you would see more PvP outside of these stations. So in conclusion here, yeah, I do kill for sport. You should probably understand why I do it. Because you just can't find anybody anywhere else outside of these stations. And if you separate the player base too much, you're not going to have a game. You're not going to have a game worth playing anyway. This is a very dangerous road to go down. Ultima Online did this with Trammel. World of Warcraft did this with arenas and battlegrounds. Many other games did the same thing, and they killed the PvP player base.